What's up, y'all? It's Walker Media. I'm back today with another episode of Not So Randoms. We got a new guest on here. Usually, I be having rappers, but we got a producer on here. The first producer to be on Not So Random and on my show, just in Walker Media in general. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hey, thank you. Thank you for introducing me. My name is uh, Tro Bands, you know, Billboard number one producer, producing for Lil Dirt, Young Thug, Hot Boy, Bayface Ray, Rallo Rodriguez, and the catalog goes on and on. You know, born and raised San Diego, California. You know, let's do it. Let's get started. I'm about to get into it. So I see you said born and raised San Diego, California, right? What was yeah. growing up there like for you, or growing up in general, basically? Um, it was, I'm gonna be honest, like looking back at it now, you know, um, I feel very blessed, you know, being born in a city right next to, um, where, um, uh, my parents were born, you know, uh, Tijuana, cause all my, like my, I'm Mexican, um, ethnicity wise. And, um, so basically, um, my whole family's back there. So, you know, in all honesty, it's, uh, looking back at this, um, grateful, you know, um, basically, um, parents split like when I was like 11. So I stayed with mom. So I'm really like a mama's boy at heart. So in all honesty, um, just growing up, I always see my mom like struggle for rent stuff. You know, that shit really inspired me and motivated me because she was such a hard worker to keep on going and to strive for more than just the average life, you know? And honestly, just growing up out here, it's been, it's fun. It's a fun place if you make it fun, you know? Um, going to the beach yesterday, I just went jet skiing with some rappers. So, um, That's it's tough. all about like, I see that on your story. It was fun. It was fun. Um, hundred percent. Uh, but yeah, growing out here in San Diego, California, um, happy. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Um, it was a, um, it's a tough environment because there are a lot of haters, a lot of people that don't believe in you and they won't believe in you until they start to see it. But you know, me they personally, I'm bro. a person of faith. Don't worry. They I feel like that's it. I feel like that's everywhere, but I'm a person of faith. You know, I believe that, you know, God brought me here and God made this interview happen and God made all my success happen, you know? That's, um, so I'll be honest, like, born here in California, you know, San Diego, you know, it's um, it was great, but, you know, there's a lot of obstacles in the way, but, you know, got to suppress them. What originally got you into producing and making these type of beats? Like, in all honesty, I believe I was just always listening to music in, in the sense that it was something that, like, I couldn't go a day without listening to music. I had to, you know, even as a kid. And I really remember my, like, genres always switch and shit. Like, you know, middle school, I was listening to very, like, like boom bap, like, J. Cole and stuff like that. Then getting into high school, I was listening to, the, it was that SoundCloud era, 2016, when I started, like, my freshman year. So a friend, like, hey, bro, you should listen to Lil Uzi Vert. I'm like, who is this dude? I listen to him. I'm like, damn, bro, I'm such a fan of this. But the one thing I remember that popped out in my head when I was listening to this, or the tags, you know, the beat tags, you know, hearing that, um, TM88, you know, and hearing yeah. that Metro Boomy, that Sunny Digital, I was like, who are these dudes? And I just remember searching up Metro Boomy and just like, oh, shoot, this is a producer. He makes beats. Like, damn, that's crazy. I was always, always, always a fond of like producers more than a rapper just because they make the music, you know? Um, as much as we got to give uh, credit to the lyricists, you know, the beats are, you know, what really makes someone like go crazy in the club, you know? And um, me personally, I just never thought I could really get into it because I, I played soccer growing up. So I always thought I was going to go pro, I'm going to be honest. But um, when it, when that dream didn't happen, I was like, well, I'm not, I'm, I still got this dreamer mentality, you know, that like anything's possible. So I was like, what's the next step? So I think I started rapping, didn't work out, didn't see any success. I started engineering. But I ain't gonna lie, that shit gets more in over a while, depending on what, how, how far you go with it. Mm. And then after that, I was like, the last thing, let me try making beats. And I just, I loved it. I fell in love with it when I was like 16, just making beats. And just, I knew that I just got, I want to keep doing it. That's all I knew. Just keep on doing it. And now we're here in 2022. About to be a billboard, no more producer tomorrow, you know, let's go. Now, working with all these different artists, you know, getting all these rapper credits, what's your schedule like now? Because I imagine you, you're probably doing it full time. Like, I know a lot of people, they try to do half half, but some people, you just got to go all in. So, is your schedule packed with anything? Like, um, Schedule in the sense of, like, making beats and I'll also engineer yeah. just to make that extra bread because I am, like, living alone right now. Mm -hmm. Um, So, uh, it's just one of those things where... um. I really got to make sure that I use my time wisely, you know, can't waste time, you know, as much as I want to play the PS4 and as much as, you know, I want to sit on the couch, just eat food or something, there's work to be done and there's more like plaques to get in, there's more rappers to work with. So I'm always like making sure that it's not like a set schedule, like I could go beach from this to this time. But the one thing I do realize or um, do make sure that I do is like before I end the day, let me get these beats done. Let me get these loops done. Let me make sure that I get this amount done today. 
but I never like try to force myself because the one thing I realized is this music shit is a it's an art job you know like your, your emotions and your personality and your feelings that they come to account you know it's not just a nine to five where it don't matter if you're depressed mad you know you gotta do the work and whatever you do you just get that get that shit done you know but this job you know if I'm like in my feelings and shit I'm not gonna make turn shit you know I'll make some melodic shit you know and yeah. if I got I'm, I'm mad as hell you know I'll make that turn shit you know so like my feelings do play a part and once I realize that I make sure that I take advantage of the opportunity so when I'm, I'm like in my feelings and shit with a girl that I'm talking to or whatever you know I just make melodic shit you know just like one thing that I want to tell all producers and stuff you know like don't forget this is an art job you know like pay attention to your own feelings and play that and, and nice way to look you know at put it. that pain into music thank you thank you now I know I remember I asked you what's the vibes like when you record and you said Usually you like to make your beats alone. Say you making a beat from scratch with an artist and they want something changed or they don't like how it sounds. How do you go about it, like approaching that situation? Do you just work with them? Or are you like, nah, bro, it got to sound like this? Um, I think that's like a case by case scenario. It just depends on what they're asking for. But like if it's a specific sound or anything, it's just trial by error. You know, I just try different sounds till he finds like the one he likes. But um, it depends if someone asked me to completely change the sound of a beat. And, you know, and it depends on who they are and who I am. You know, it, it, it sounds weird, but like the way that I put it is that um, I'm not going to change my sound for you, you know, um, as much as if you want a West, uh, like I'm going to be honest, I don't make West Coast beats. And I remember an artist asked me for West Coast beats. And I told him, hey, man, I'll be honest with you. I don't make those. And I'm not going to change my sound to make those, you know, as people want to be versatile. I'm not going to make something I don't want to make, you know. So yeah. if you want a West Coast beat, go somewhere else, you know. But me personally, if you want a troll band beat and now that troll band's like, as I said, as I said, in the sense that like that brand holds name now with the Lord Dirk song, you know, you want a troll band beat, you come to me, you know. But it, like if it's a small sound or something like that, I'm more than welcome because like, I'm very open minded. But if you come telling me to make a specific beat for you that I don't want to make, then I'm not going to force myself, you know. I feel you. So who are your top three favorite producers slash inspirations that like made you want to produce? Um, like modern is got to be Metro Boomin and Murder Beats, you know, just hearing those tags everywhere, seeing 21 Savage, seeing like, you know, the, the Migos, you know, just hearing that tag everywhere and just my biggest fond of is like making hits, you know, and these people have made hits for sure. So I like, you know, those are really inspirations. And another one is like Kanye West, you know, yeah, that's just like, oh, all the time. that documentary, I, I loved it. I loved it. And it's just I I love that faith it. he had himself. It's so good. You got to watch it. You got to watch it. <laughs> the ones I would have to say. Definitely Computers and Murders, you got that one because I fuck with that song heavy. I fuck with Touch of Trent, Metro Boomin. I think he passed away, ATL Jacob, but I fuck with a lot of like. When I listen to music, I, listen, I really be listening in depth, like for the producer, producer tags, everything. Like, so. But I know on your page, it says you're managed by St. Paul Management. What's, what's that? Like, is that like a person, a label? Like. Oh no, that's my brother, bro. St. Paul's my manager. He works with 100K. Yeah. Oh, uh, not my like, actual brother, but we so we close, we close. I'm be honest mm-hmm. with you. Uh, St. Paul's that like one of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. You know, he's a uh, he he started managing me. Um, right, we like right be, right before all the placements happened, right. But mm-hmm. I just remember that day, like it was just basically I he was he manages Slatsy and still does. And I just remember tapping in with him. Hey man, um, can I send you beats with Slatsy? And then he's like, Yeah, for sure. And I told him how I have the hop shit, just to, like, you know, give myself a little more credit. Um, and then he, I just remember he was like, hey, let's hop on a call later. Then we just talked for like two hours, like easily, bro. I didn't even know we talked for two hours. And he just, at the end, he was like, hey, bro, I want to manage you. And at the time I was getting these placements, but I'm be honest, I didn't know what I was doing, bro. Like I could do all the research I can, but like, it's still like, I don't even know what I'm like supposed to do. Like, what's the next step, you know? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this leap of faith with this dude. And I'm glad I did because two years later we got this dirt placement. And I'll be honest with you, this dude's been like, you know, the best manager I could ever ask for. Um, God really sent him to me. And, you know, shout out St. Paul, bro. I appreciate you, brother. I hope you're hearing this. Uh, you're going to watch this for sure. But when you yeah, watch this, bro, just too. remember, bro, can have done this shit without you. Now, nah, the next you, thing. Oh, you about to finish? Oh, oh no, you are good. You are good. So. <laughs> The next one is like, what was it like? How does it feel knowing that you produce songs for some big names and rap? That you got Lil Dirk, Young Thug, Hot Boy, Slat, Slat Z, or Slat Z. and then I think you even worked with YNW Portland, right? 
Oh yeah, we have. Yeah, like, you got you got some big names, bro. You up there? You got speaking yourself highly, no cap. <laughs> um, I'll be honest. It's uh, as of right now, it's surreal. It's very surreal. Like the low dirt shit really like shook me. I was like, damn, bro. Like this is getting crazier and crazier, you know. Um, and I'm glad like they got released and everything. And I'm on seven two two zero. Um, I'll be honest, bro. It's all like I'm happy. I really am, bro. Like um, because I've been working for this for a while now, and you know, there's still more to go, and there's still more that I want. But as of right now, I feel um, I'm grateful. You know, I'm internally grateful because you know, I remember like like using like the smallest rapper that I worked with as a credit. And now, you know, I got these big names in my bio and it's, it's, um, it's unbelievable, you know, and I got the one person I really got to thank is thank God, bro. God really made all this happen. You know, it wouldn't have happened without him, bro. I'm a real religious um, base, you know, mm-hmm. I ain't a perfect Christian, but I'm going to tell you the truth. God, well, God worked with me, you know, God works with people that aren't perfect. So, you know, like in all honesty, um, God, all, God made it all happen. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. And definitely when stuff like that happens, I feel like it's easier to see the vision. Like I remember when I tell you I've been doing videos, like vlogs, I've been keeping up with YouTube. I, I watch YouTube all day. I've been doing vlogging for, for years. I done made gaming channels, all types of shit. But I fuck with music heavy. So it's like, I'm not going to be a rapper, but I like, I watch music videos for fun. Like I always want to do edits and all that. And a lot of times it'd be hard not want, like not wanting to give up. But I remember I got invited to like one of my one of my boys, his name Rec Bangin, bro. You got to hit him up. Like, yo, Rec Bangin, he, he going up right now. He opened up for Dirk. I'll, he opened up for Dirk, and I remember I didn't even get to see Dirk, but I seen his dress, and I was like, "Yo, this dude like right here, yo, he's right there." And then I got invited. I got invited on tour with Benny the Butcher in Atlanta, and I got some videos there. I got a picture with him and shit. It was just like seeing all that shit. It's just like, bro, I can't give up now. Like I gotta keep going. So. Keep going, bro. Keep doing what you're doing for real. Hey, God didn't take you this far to leave you, bro. That's yeah, one thing no I tell cap. myself all the time. Way to look at it. Um, any changes for you since producing for them? Like anybody been acting different towards you? Like, oh, bro, yeah, trying to be your friend, buddy, buddy type shit. Oh, bro, you wouldn't believe it, bro. It's funny as hell, bro. I'll be honest with you. I like, I'm. It's it's very like. I'll be honest. The first day I got, I had hella anxiety, bro, because like it was very weird feeling the idea that. The people that didn't fuck with me really do fuck with me. Like, not really do, but, like, now they want to fuck with me, you know? And people that I haven't spoke to you in years are hitting me up like crazy. Um, it's it's a weird feeling. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, it's not something that, like, all, like, because I'm not very, like, an attention-starving person, bro. Like, I'm cool being by myself, you know? But um, it's just, like, it's very weird. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, like, it's, it's <laughs> I'm going to say that shit again. It's weird. But at the same time, this is what I've been asking for, you know? This is what I've been asking, like, because along with the music, I want to I wanna have my credit, you know? I'm glad that my name right there you know when you search up credits for who produced computer murders right there it says show bands you know so I, i've been asking for this so I, I can't be surprised you know i feel you um the final question i got for you is if you could give any advice to any upcoming producers engineers or just anybody trying to just be be something what would you say to them like on paper just you know and you hear everybody say this bro but it's for a reason there's a reason why everybody say this you know everybody that has a certain level of success with this shit and not just music you know anything it's you really gotta work hard you really gotta stay consistent and not a lot of people talk about this one um you gotta have faith bro you have to have faith you gotta build that relationship with god you know if you want an advice without god then don't ask me not you but like you know in general right if anybody asks you know because i'll be honest the only reason i ever got this far with the music shit was with god god made it all happen and as much as you know as one person would like to take credit for it i can't bro i can't god made it happen you know there's i remember right before like i really got religious and shit i wasn't doing anything you know i was making beats but i was making beats for a hundred dollars whatever right or like a hundred dollars for like three beats or whatever right and i was just selling beats here and there but nothing really happened none of the things that i wanted happen was happening and i just t- told god like hey man like none of this shit is working now i don't know what to do like help me out like I-, I need help you know i can't do this by myself i truly can't and god changed my life ever since then and you know things been going up and up and up and i Remember, every time I pray, I pray twice a day. And the one thing I ended is, um, I promise you, God, if you make me successful and you bless me with all these things I've been praying for, because I wrote everything down. I wrote, I will have a little dirt placement when I was a senior. And that's, I wrote it down like six times on my notebook. And that shit just happened, you know? Manifest. And it's just manifested, bro. Like, I got crystals and shit, bro. So, for all the little guys hating on crystals, bro, shit. I got a little dirt placement on that shit, bro. 
That's it. Okay, okay, bro. Uh, I'll be honest with you. This was, um, I told, I promised God that if you ever make me successful and you know you bless me with the things I've been asking for, you know. And they asked me in, in the interview, how do you do it, Trill Bands? How do you do? How do you get this so, so far? I'm gonna tell everybody this you. So I'm living example of what God could do for people. Truly. Yeah. God make wonders. Um, that's yes, gonna be it for today. You got any final words? Wanna let people know anything? Social medias. Uh, I'll be honest, this San, Di- this, uh, San Diego producer, Tro Bands, you know, Billboard number one producer, yep. produced for a little Dirk, Young Thug, Hoppo, Babyface, Ray, you know, but you should search up Tro Bands underscore on Instagram, because I don't have the actual name, but Tro Bands on any other social media, and you're going to search me up and, you know, show some love, and I'll show some love back, but, you know, I thank God for everything, you know, real talk. Okay. Stay tuned for more, y'all. This is an episode of Not So Randoms. Should be up pretty soon, but stay tuned for more.